We heard the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, which is the selection that is for <coughs> the monastics. And the same Gospel reading that we read in the third watch of the midnight hour. And we will review to say that every time that there's a commemoration of a saint during the week, usually there is a selection that is uh, made appropriate for him, unless it's during the times of the fast or the feast. <coughs> As you heard, <clears throat> that, that the word that gives many points of what it is to be a Christian dedicated and consecrated for the name of the Lord. <clears throat> the, first <clears throat> the first gift or the first request, <clears throat> which is that there is no fear. <clears throat> There's no fear for the kingdom and to search what is for the good pleasure that the Father is willing to grant the kingdom. As the Lord said to us, he said, you do not know what to pray for. Ask for the kingdom of heaven, and everything else will be added. <clears throat> those who seek the life of Christianity, and indeed also those who are dedicated to the Lord night and day, are dedicated for the same purpose, to seek the kingdom. And he said, it is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom, so you seek and you work and you labor for this. Then the instruction, which is to sell what they have, give to the poor, and follow the, the, the commandment of the monastic life, which is given, so that they will have the same thing, the treasure in heavens. Then it says, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. So you know in the monastic life, the, gird, the girdle of the waist, which before they used to gird themselves in order to go outside of the house, uh, and do any work. Anyone who does a work will have to gird their waist because of the type of clothes that they used to have. Not like today, it needs to have something around the waist so they can work and move quickly. But the girdle which is in the monastic life, you see it in the consecration of a monk or a nun, where they put the special band about the waist that is the sign for chastity and purity. That's why he says, let always this girdle be there, and the lamps that are burning, which is the, the symbol or the type of vigil and prayer, and unceasing prayer, which they will have. That's why even in some of the churches and the monasteries, there are certain lamps that will not be uh, blown out, that will always be burning. In the days of old, in the, in the when in the tabernacle, and also in the temple, that there was the ever-burning lamp that was a sign for the presence of God in our life. So also he says uh, and instructs for the monastic that always that you have these lamps without, uh, that will not be quenched. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, he may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master when he comes will find so doing. So this is the blessing of those. Again, this verse, as you will see many times in the gospel readings that are relating to the parables of the kingdom, there is a combination between the general instruction and the specific instruction. So as we see, there are some verses relating just for the monks and some relating for all of the Christians. This request for, to be ready for the Son of Man when he comes is for all of us. How we prepare is different. There are some who prepare the night and day in vigil. There are some who prepare by dedicating their life for serving others. Other people who are preparing to be faithful in their, in their sickness, in their difficulty, in their sacrifice for God. <clears throat> if he should come in the second watch or in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. There were four watches that were divided in the night. And as you know, in the, in the Igbeya, we have the three watches that we say in the midnight, and the fourth one, which is the coming of the Son of Man. As the Gospel reading, when the disciples were in the boat, in the midst of the storm, that he came to them, they were struggling for during the three watches, but he comes to them in the fourth watch, walking on the water, which is a symbol of the coming of the Lord. So the first three watches is our life that we're struggling in darkness and in difficulty and in the storms of life, and he will come to us. So that's why he said the difficult times in our life 
we struggled with faith, we struggled in hope, and we struggled with, with uh, energy, with work, and labor for the kingdom. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would have come, he would have watched and not have allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. This is meant, again, for all of us. We don't know when the Son of Man is coming, and we also don't know when the time of our departure is near. Some people, God revealed to them a year or a period or a day. But even in the midst of that, we do not know exactly the time when our soul will be taken so that we always be continually ready. That's why in the Igbeya, in the evening prayer, we're always asking the Virgin Mary to be with us in that hour of our departure so that when it draws near, that we'll be ready, that we'll be faithful, that she will intercede on us because the time of the departure is very difficult. The one who spends his time and her time and her days meditating on the final days of our life is always ready and is always blessed. But when we lose sight of the end of days and the end of our life in this earth, then it, uh, you find a lot of problems coming. Abu Nofer, you heard in the Senexar when he was waiting and when he heard that the time is drew near, it said his face changed and he became like a fire because he was ready and waiting for 60 years for this. And you know, that's why we read the gospel of this today because of the departure of Amenas. When St. Peter asked him, he said, are you speaking this to all of the people or just to us? Like we answered before. Is this a general message for everyone? or a specific message just for the apostles, just for the disciples, just for the monks. And he said, the faithful and wise steward, which is every person, everyone is, should be faithful and a wise steward, but also the disciples have a special stewardship, a special calling. Not all are apostles, not all are called to this life. So he answers in both. Some of this message is for everyone, and some is for specific. You heard also the psalm, that we read, the righteous shall flourish as a palm tree. This is meant for all the righteous people, but it has a special meaning for Abu Nofer because the palm tree that was granted for him to live next to. That's why usually we read a different psalm when we read this gospel, but because of the life of Abu Nofer, because God created a special palm tree for him to live next to and a special well of water. So when we read Psalm 1 or Psalm 91 here, that you see, for him it has a special meaning. And same for the gospel, whenever we read any gospel reading in the church, that it is a general message for all, everyone, but it has a special meaning for me. If I only stay with a general message, then I will not see what I need for, to apply to my life to live and to serve and for salvation. And if I only take the special meaning, I could get confused because not every message is special it could be confusing for one person in this. <clears throat> and this palm tree, which is fixed in the house of the God or in the land of God, as you will see, planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of the house of our God. You know, even in the temple, one of the few things that they could carve and put inside or in the tabernacle were the palm trees. And they could design a palm tree. Why? Because it was a symbol of the righteous person that could live in the desert of the world but still be flourished and still live in a righteous and holy way, still to bear fruits in the midst of the desert. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. The message that we hear and that maybe even when we are young, that God reveals to us uh, a special mission, a special purpose, a special message that we have in this world. The faithful people who remember and continue and work, not to forget. That's why he said, I told you these instructions, be faithful to them, so when I come, I will ask for the word. Like the servants, the Lord gave to them each one, and then he left them for a while. He didn't keep nagging and asking and reminding them. 
He said, I gave you the objective, I gave you the mission, and there will be a time when I come and I will say, what did you do with your time? How did you spend your time in prayer? How did you spend your time in service? What did you do for your family and for your friends? How were you faithful in the gospel that I gave to you? How did you share with others and were obedient? What about the stories of the saints? How did you live and take from them? As you know, when you read in many of the Senexar, you see that he was reading faithful in the books. What are the books of the church? There are mainly three or four. The first one, the Igbeya, the second one, the Bible, the third one, the Psalmodeya, and then the fourth one, which we say the lives of the saints and the history of the saints. That our life, that's why we read in every liturgy, these, to be faithful in prayer, to be faithful in the word of God, to be faithful in praise, and to be faithful in living the lives of the saints and the history of the saints so that we have inherited what they've given us. And we find ourselves mixed as into their lives. How? Like in taking, for example, the faithfulness of Abba Nofer, or the watchfulness of St. Anthony, or the service in St. Paul, or the good deeds of St. Verena, or the sacrifices of many of the martyrs, or the fatherhood of the patriarchs, or the caring of uh, the, the wise virgins and the servants of God. That we find ourselves as we grow in prayer, as we grow in the gospel, and as we grow in praise, that also in the work that we have, we have inherit the inheritance of the saints with us. May our Lord give us a special blessing in these days as we're commemorating also St. Mark yesterday and tomorrow that we find in the patron of the saint that always his presence with us and the saints always gathering us and guiding us to the faithful calling which he has for every one of us. Glory be to him now and ever. The age is forever. <laughs> Christus, 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 Christus,